Hi everyone, I'm Jelena Okazaki with News West 9 Sunrise and I'm partnering with Downtown Odessa for another virtual painting class. So if you joined me in the past, you know that we paint for the holidays and this one is going to be specifically for Valentine's Day. So today we are painting those little candy shaped hearts that you see inside, you know, the grocery stores and the ones with the little messages on there, conversation hearts, I, I think it's what they're called. So you should have all your stuff from downtown Odessa. You should have your paint brushes, your palette. Make sure you have a water cup because you're going to want to wash your paint brushes in between switching colors. Also, it's no, never a bad idea to have a little rag here on the side because you want to wipe off some of the water and some of the paint that remains on the brushes because we are using acrylic paint and make sure you're wearing something you don't mind getting dirty because this could stain your clothes. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna do a heart shape. If you don't know how to do that, let me show you how. I have a regular piece of paper and I'm gonna fold it in half like this, okay? And basically what I'm gonna do is where this crease is, you're going to make the shape of half a heart. Kind of, kind of looks like a teardrop Make sure you do it where the crease is, not where the paper separates, because then you're gonna have two different shapes. So you're gonna start here, if this marker will cooperate. Okay, so it should look like this, because when you open it up, that's how you're gonna get your heart shape. So you're gonna cut that out, and once you do that, you should have something that looks like this, okay? So now that I have my paper heart, I'm going to get started on the outline. First thing I'm gonna do, I think I want my candy heart to start right here. So I'm gonna trace with my pencil, make sure you have a pencil here. Okay. All right. Okay, so I have, you can't see it but it's there, okay? You got your heart there. Next thing you're gonna do, I think I'm gonna, you can place your heart wherever you want, but because this is going to overlap, right? I'm gonna make sure this heart is right behind the heart that I just drew. So I'm going to make sure I'm not overlapping anything. I'm just gonna draw behind my heart that I just drew on. Let me show you how I did this. Okay. So you see, it's right behind it. There's no overlapping in between this part, right? Okay, the next part, I want my messages to be clear for the conversational hearts, right? So then I'm going to, I think I'm gonna go right here. Make sure you don't overlap these hearts. So I'm gonna add my heart shape right there. And then go right here. Ta-da! And you can really pick whatever sayings you want on your hearts. I mean, the company did come up with seven, several different uh, sayings. So you could say you're cute or cutie or I love you or whatever you want to put on there. Okay, so for my background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the color blue. So you should have your blue paint. So I'm going to take that. And now I am going to just start painting on the background, okay? So just be extra careful. Try not to get it on the actual heart itself. Um, and if you want, you don't want to use too much. Like, this is fine for me, okay? gonna keep painting over that. I actually might sit a little closer so that y'all can see. So what's kind of interesting about this company that first came out with these conversational hearts, they came out with them, I wanna say in the 1800s, but they started to come into fruition, I would say in 19, the early 1900s um, and it was by a company called Neko. So um, the original creator wanted to put these messages on these hearts and they had like a little machine that kind of did it for, um, they kind of put a little stamp 
on the hearts. So I don't know if you guys have had it before. Um, I'm not really a fan of them. I don't really like the way they taste, but I think they are very cute and uh, always something fun to give away on Valentine's Day. But actually the company went bankrupt sometime in 2019. So yeah, we didn't see, uh, I think it was 2019. We didn't see those conversation hearts in uh, that, that year. So um, eventually it was bought out by another company. So now those candy hearts are back. So if you like them, then you can give it to your Valentine. Okay. And also because this is going to peek a little through, peek a little through, this is gonna peek through the canvas, through the blue. So I'm just gonna paint over it when some of it dries. The good thing about acrylic paint is that the drying process is relatively fast. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna finish painting. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and then I'm going to heat it up with a blow dryer. So if you do have a blow dryer, this is what I like to do. I like to get my blow dryer and this just makes the paint dry faster. So especially if you are very impatient like I am, I go ahead and use a blow dryer. So it's, it's, it's really fast when you use a blow dryer. So what I'm gonna do now is you kind of see these spots where the canvas peeks through. I'm gonna go over that and add another coat. I think it's very important to add a couple coats if you can, especially when you start to see it um, peak a little bit. This is what we call opaque. So when um, you know your art teacher says make it opaque, you just wanna add a couple coats. And the reason why we wanted to trace our outline of the hearts is because if you were to paint this entire canvas blue, you would be adding multiple layers on top of what you already have because the blue is already so dark. So let's say if you wanted to make yellow candy hearts, then you would add so many layers because yellow is typically going to be brighter. Okay, so here I'm gonna touch this up a little bit. And you kind of see some of these right here. I'm gonna paint over that. Sometimes what I like to do is instead of dipping in the actual uh, cap, I just use the, or the actual little jug, the jar there, I just use the cap. Less is more. And I'm gonna clean this up. I think the flat brush is probably my favorite. Just cause I feel like I have more control over how I'm painting this. Okay. It looks good to go. Now I'm going to dip my brush in the water. Let me let that sit there for a second. And I just kind of wash it around like this because you don't want the paint to dry on the can or on the paintbrush because then it makes this plasticky uh, residue that just kind of damages your brush. So you want to make sure you clean it in between. Um, you use a different color. Okay, now I'm gonna go back with a blow dryer and I'm going to start working on the next color. So, if you know, your primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some mixing. So I'm gonna add some blue here. Okay, come off, all right. Then I'm gonna grab some of the yellow. Cause what color are we making for any kids watching right now? Blue and yellow make what? It makes green. So if you guessed that right, you are correct. So let me get some of this yellow. I'm doing equal parts, okay? This yellow is not cooperating, but let me just drag it on there and I'll show you. Okay, so I got blue and yellow and I'm gonna mix that up. And that will make you a green color. Okay, so you see that? There you go. We got some green there. 
that's the beauty of painting. You get to mix colors. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some white just to make it look a little brighter. Now I'm gonna mix again. I kinda want this green to be a little lighter. You don't have to do that. You can skip this step, but uh, I'm going to mix it so I can come up with this. There you go, see some of that light green there? Okay, now this is a lot, that's a lot of paint. So I'm just gonna, yeah, maybe I'll make this green. Okay. So I'm gonna paint this entire heart, make it this green. You can, it doesn't have to be green, you can choose any color you want. And there is a chance I might have to go back and add another coat as well. Add all that green on there. Just slab it all on there. Um, actually, if you add a thin coat, the paint will dry a lot faster if you don't want to use the blow drying technique. Um, otherwise, you're probably waiting maybe five minutes, sometimes maybe even 30 minutes to allow your paint to dry. So it really depends on how many coats you have and how thick you apply the paint. So I'm trying to add a thin layer because sometimes um, it can take a while for the paint to dry. But you know, compared to other types of paint, you know, there's temper paint and oil paint. So sometimes I prefer to use acrylic because it's just faster when it comes to drying your paintings. So I have some clumps here. I'm just gonna even that out. I'm going to dry this up and then I'm going to paint over it again. So if you see right here, there's these clumps of paint. So that just takes longer to dry. So I'm gonna go over that and even it out. Then I'm gonna add more layers on here. Because remember, you want this to look opaque, okay? Meaning you just wanna add a couple coats. So I'm gonna make sure I don't have any of these clumps. I think I see one right here. Okay. See, now you can't see the canvas peeking through. So I'm gonna wash my brush one more time. And then clean. I'm gonna put this right here. Make sure you have a rag. Oh, this will save your brushes. I promise you that. Just make sure you're cleaning them in between paints. All right, time to use our handy dandy blow dryer. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and use the yellow. I'm probably going to make this yellow and maybe make that pink or vice versa, it doesn't matter. So I'll add some yellow here and make sure you clean your brushes nice and thoroughly because you don't wanna add you know, your yellow and there's still some uh, residue of the green paint on there. So just make sure you're very clean about it. So the great thing about using the flat brush is you can kind of be a little careful on these edges here. I will say my favorite candy that I love getting on Valentine's Day are Ferrero Rocher's just cause they're nice. I'm more of a chocolate person. I mean, if someone gave me some candy hearts, you know, I'd still probably eat them, but I'm more of a chocolatey person. Okay, almost done. Might have to go back and add some more coats, but so far, so good. 
Also be very careful where you're placing your water cup because you don't want to be like me who just spills the paint or the water on the carpet. And now I'm going to use pink for this one and I'm going to choose pink because I'm going to use the red paint for the lettering. See the green is basically dry. I can put my thumb on there. So there's kind of some clumps you can see there and I'm going to even all this out. So I think I'm pretty content with how the pink heart turned out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up my pink paint. Um, you can also save some of this paint if you have any ideas for, you know, something else you want to paint for Valentine's Day. So while I'm doing that, make sure you wash your brush. And you should also have a pointed brush from downtown Odessa. If you because you should have your flat brush and then you should have the, uh, the pointed one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use the red paint to write my words on there. What should I write on there? I don't know. Let's get some ideas. I think one of the ones that said, um, you could put love you. So I'm gonna use the red or you could put maybe like cutie, right? Trying to pick a good spot. You don't have to write the same thing I'm writing. You can really get a little creative and write whatever you want. So I'll add a C. I'm not gonna write on top of the green heart. I want this to go under. And I'm using just kind of the tip of the brush. It doesn't have to be perfect. We are all human. You know, our handwriting is gonna be very different, okay? This is how much I'm actually loading on the brush. So not really that much. There you go, cutie. What's another one? I need some ideas. There's one, there's one with the fray, it says LOL on it. So maybe I'll write that right here. And I'll write it after. Uh, I'll do maybe I love you. There was actually one year when the company, they were making these candy hearts and apparently the machine was broken. So some of the candy hearts had uh, missing words on it. So can you imagine getting a candy heart that just says I love and doesn't say you at the end? I don't know what year that was, but uh, it happens. Okay. And then I think I'm going to just put LOL here. It doesn't have to be lovey-dovey. Can write whatever you want. You can put hey friend, you can put um and there you have it. Your very own candy heart. And if you want to write more, you can. Or if you want to put a little heart here, you can do that as well. But there you go, your own little candy heart for Valentine's Day. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going to be airing these uh, sessions all month long. So thank you guys so much for taking part in this. I hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day, or I hope you guys had a wonderful Valentine's Day. But anyways, hope you had fun. Thank you so much for joining us and stay safe. Bye y'all. And make sure when you're finished with your masterpiece, you post them to downtown Odessa's Facebook page so that we can share them.